Well, we're live here now, and thanks for joining us today. First of all, it's a, a great honor to have you all here. Uh, we have uh, speakers from the UK, uh, from Portugal, from Italy, and from Greece. And of course, last but not least, from Brazil, my good friend and international director for academic affairs, Jair Jevar, is joining here us today. And uh, we'll, we're going to talk about mediation in Europe and the status of mediation, of course, some cultural peculiarities. Uh, how, how is mediation currently in your countries? And, and of course, we're going to speak, Harry Minton from the UK is going to start speaking about the universals. And then, of course, uh, the other speakers are going to speak about the peculiarities in their own countries. So I'm going to introduce you now. And once again, uh, on behalf of our president, uh, the CBMA's president, Gustavo Schmitz, thanks for joining us today. And this event is also is sponsored, is hosted by CBMA, the Brazilian Center for Mediation and Arbitration. And also it's co-hosted by MGG, the Medi Mediators Global Group, which, is, uh, which we all make part of it. So Thanks for joining us today, and I hope MGG grows and, and get more components as, as we go and we do our events here. So uh, let me introduce you guys. First, of course, the ladies. Uh, Olga Tsipsi from Greece. She's a lawyer at the Supreme Court of Greece with organizational and communication skills, responsibility, dedication, and fund of lifelong learning. Thanks for joining us today, Olga. Ursula Kayser. Uh, Portugal, do I say Kaiser, uh, Ursula? Casa. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's Portuguese, sorry. It's German, actually. Uh, she, she, has, she holds an European Master in Mediation since 2000. In her work, she focuses on community and complex planning mediation, public dialogue, consensus building, and training. Uh, Henry Minto from the UK. Uh, he's a mediator accredited by the Charter Institute of Arbitration arbitrators and a solicitor. Uh, Giovanni Matteucci from Italy. Uh, she, he's an Italian commercial mediator, a trainer certified by the Italian Ministry of Justice. And, and of course, I'm just saying uh, just a small, a, a small bit, tiny part of your resumes because you, you have a lot of experience in mediation and, and you know, you've been doing it for a long time. So and that's why you are here today. And that's why I'm going to learn a lot. We all going to learn a lot from you today. And Please, we have to learn every, everybody from the <laughs> others. So uh, and last but not least, uh, Jair Jevar, he's CBMA's International Director for Academic Affair, Ar Ar Affairs, Arbitrator, Mediator, Lawyer, Professor, and Strauss Institute Ambassador. And last and least myself, I'm the Vice President for Academic Affairs of the CBMA. So thanks a lot for joining us today. Jair, please, as you are a CBMA rep representative here today, please, any uh, remarks to just for us to begin with, with Henry? Uh, well, before uh, just uh, taking, uh, giving the, the stage to Henry, I just would like to say that this is a great opportunity for our audience to learn from the best. We are talking uh, with people very, very qualified, with lots of experience, and, and for sure, uh, uh, they will bring a lot of light over this uh, uh, subject, which is mediation. Which it, it, sometimes it seems so, it seems so simple, but it's so complex in its many different aspects and so on and so forth. So uh, without uh, uh, much uh, ado, I, I would just uh, 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 ask Henry uh, to uh, take the stage and, and, and give us uh, some highlights on, on some universal aspects of this wonderful profession, which is uh, mediation, right? And, and uh, how he's doing his job in, in uh, England, mainly, but in the United Kingdom and, and part of, of a huge part of Europe. So, Henry, please enlighten us with your knowledge. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Very good morning. I think it is in Brazil to everybody. It's midday here. Um, uh, I'm missing lunch, especially for this, so that's... Um, that's uh, something I'm doing, but I'm absolutely honored to have been invited to join this panel of experts in their field. 
Um, I've been asked to speak to the topic of mediation in Europe, cultural peculiarities. It's a very broad and wide ranging subject and I've been given 15 minutes to cover it. So it's a real challenge, but never mind. Let me just quickly introduce myself. I'm a civil and commercial mediator with over 10 years of experience covering all sorts of disputes from property to corporate, commercial to inheritance, professional negligence to education. Um, you will have noted that I'm described as coming from the United Kingdom. I'm a solicitor with over 40 years of experience qualified to practice in England and Wales, which is part of the United Kingdom, but not Scotland, which is also part of the United Kingdom, even though I'm actually Scottish by birth. Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom, even but does not far, form part of what other people describe as Great Britain. So you can see that we have some quite interesting basic structural issues in the United Kingdom. Um, our country, the United Kingdom, has three different legal systems which have evolved over the centuries and has a rich cultural diversity. Indeed, it is totally and utterly multicultural which makes it culturally peculiar, if not a unique in the world. Are you beginning to understand the dilemmas we face on our small island? The cultural peculiarities are so wide ranging that it is impossible to cover in this short webinar. In fact, it is impossible to have regard to all of them in a mediated environment where I now specialize. So mediation in the UK, where is it? There's an expression in English, which is it is alive and kicking, which means that it is absolutely at the forefront of people's minds. It's being used more and more on the basis that it saves time and expense and can rebuild broken relationships. The judges and lawyers are slowly beginning to embrace the notion and the general awareness is improving. Judges are even ordering that mediation should be tried before going to court. I don't want to get into the distinction between voluntary and compulsory mediation at this stage. I don't have the time in this short seminar, but there is, that's always a big issue. So what I want to cover today is how to address pub cultural peculiarities in mediation. The answer is that I recognize the concept, but actually do not look at peculiarities when I'm mediating, but rather the universals in human behavior. And it works. My academic influence is Noam Chomsky. I studied linguistics at university before becoming a lawyer. And Noam propounded that there is a universality of language in humans, coupled with a vast array of universals in human behavior, love, hate, hunger, thirst, fears, myths, legend, rules, food, family, transport, shelter, security, happiness, education, politics, technology, values, beliefs, rituals, I could go on, but there are enormous number of universalities that one can find in human behavior. And even without going outside central London, I can mediate cross-border, cross-culture, cross-religion, and the like. We have a truly international community. I've mediated between Arabs and Jews, Gujaratis and Sikhs, Scots and English, that's the most difficult, members of different UK Protestant churches, to name just a few. And the common approach in all of these mediations is as follows. What are your concerns? What are your fears? What are your interests? What are your needs? Invariably, the answer 
answers to those questions independent of cultural background are, for example, I want to close this dispute. I want to concentrate on something else. I want to do business with my for former friend. I want a fair outcome. I didn't mean what I said in that meeting. I really just want an apology. I want to live in peace. It's not just about the money. So my fundamental thesis is that at a basic level, all the above apply in all cultures and the skill of the mediator is to facilitate dissection of these issues and reduce them to their bare essentials. To adapt a famous advertisement, mediation reaches the parts which other forms of dispute resolution or beer cannot reach. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Henry, for enlightening us. And, and I'm really fond of the UK because, as you said, you, you are a small island, but with so many different cultures, the British and the, the English, the, the Scots and the Welsh and, and the, the Irish, of course, let's not forget. So, yeah, so it's so, so many different cult cultures in such a small place. And, of course, uh, if you maximize that to the world, we can even start begin to, to to speak about it to talk about it so thank you for your lecture and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just the first of uh, so many di discussions to come because it's such an interesting uh, uh, topic to discuss so uh, now uh, Olga Olga are you there so now from Greece please Olga the, the stage is all yours Thank you very, very much. I'm very grateful for the chance to be among such esteemed colleagues and uh, talking about my first love. And uh, as first loves uh, never die, but uh, always hurt too much. Uh, but uh, uh, I would like first to present myself in order to uh, uh, know everyone who is talking. Uh, I would like to inform the unique audience that uh, I am an accredited mediator and an arbitrator of Ministry of Justice. I'm an LLM lawyer since February 2003, and uh, I have just closed uh, my 18 years of uh, this uh, unique field of, uh, of uh, sciences. Can I say it, science? Uh, so uh, nothing is easy in Greece, and of course, everyone knows that here in my country, also, mediation is not easy. Mediation first appeared in Greece in 2010, when Greece was obliged as the last country to ratify European direction through law 3898 3, of two, 2010, which is um, Greece was uh, finally harmonized with uh, the European directive of uh, 2008, uh, 50, uh, 52. European Commission. Almost 10 years from 2010 until 2018, mediation was known only to almost 2,000 accredited mediators who, who were trained by institutions that uh, were uh, the five uh, bar associations that we, are, we have uh, here in Greece and has, uh, had established uh, these uh, institutes of uh, mediation. mediation. Uh, of course, uh, eight years, 2,000 mediators and almost 60 mediations are the numbers that we could count uh, in Greece. Something was really, really wrong. So uh, why my media mediators are only trained and uh, certified and cannot practice their skills? The problem was known, was shown in 2018 when a new mediation law amended the above first one. The Greek law 4,512 of two, uh, the year 2018 was a Rubicon. What was the innovative uh, part of this uh, new law? For the first time, mediation was introduced as a mandatory stage. 
for spe specific procedures, such as uh, family cases, torts, medical errors, car accidents, financial disputes, etc. It was the article 182 that said that uh, mediation from now on would be uh, mandatory. This states should be done before court procedures or else court procedures could be invalidated if we do, didn't uh, do this first session. What happened after issuing, issuing that law? Which were the reactions and from who? The law was suspended twice. First suspension was up to December 2018, before almost uh, two years. And the second one was up to November 2019, because of the reactions of both lawyers and judges in Greece. It was a declaration which was admitted by Supreme Court of Greece that uh, such mandatory procedure was controversial to the constitution of Greece. We cannot have mediation and mandatory. What happened next? Next, uh, the, uh, the law that was su su suspended two, two times, as I said, uh, was never implemented and was replaced by the new one, the, second, the third mediation law that was 4,640, 2019, which is, is finally in force since uh, 15th of January for family cases and since 1st of July for torts. No other uh, disputes uh, are uh, included for such a mandatory first session. Due to that law, mediator has to be accredited by Ministry of Justice. That means that she or he must uh, participate in a 80 hours compulsory course having passed exams of training entity that uh, is uh, trained and also having passed oral and written exams of the Ministry of Justice. No legal background is necessary, but the candidates shall retain a degree of higher education. After achieving all this, mediators can take a number of uh, registry that, and are listed to mediators catalog of Ministry of Justice. And uh, of course, can be selected for any civil and commercial uh, mediation, not only this mandatory uh, to uh, cases, uh, family and thoughts. Mediators uh, shall attend to lifelong mediation uh, learning programs every three years and earning CPDs, cred uh, credits uh, for the, their trainings. There are two kinds of mediation here in Greece. The voluntary mediation for any civil and commercial case, apart from those, uh, those two that I mentioned. And of course, the mandatory first session of mediation, which consists in fact an attempt, uh, the case to be solved before going to the courts. Uh, the attempt is mandatory on for two kinds of disputes, as I said before, because uh, otherwise, otherwise that would be uh, non-constitutional here in Greece. I could talk hours uh, uh, for this uh, useless uh, first mediation uh, section that I really don't uh, be fond of because uh, it's really um, not uh, giving the mediators the prestige that they, they have because it's uh, really complicated all this section, the first mandatory section is very complicated. A mediator has to call both parties to uh, try to uh, take their, um, their concept in order to uh, be the mediator for this first session and all this uh, uh, for nothing indeed. That, that's not mediation here in Greece and they really um, some amendments shall be done and um, we are moving into this uh, direction because uh, uh, we don't like the I way that uh, mediation is, uh, is uh, evoluted. Uh, so, uh, do I have, I don't have uh, many time, eh? yeah, as I can think. Did I hear something? No? You have all the time in the world, Olga. Go ahead, Thank you just proceed. Thank you very much. So, um, Family cases, apart from those uh, of mar marital disputes that cannot be ma mediated here in Greece, uh, th that, uh, that cannot be mediated are divorce, recognition of existence or non-existence of marriage, <laughs> pa parent-child-child 
relationships. Uh, all these are not uh, mediatable here in Greece. And uh, of course, one uh, um, that is mandatory is also the claims uh, and the disputes with price over th uh, 30,000 euros. And finally, disputes that are uh, oriented from uh, contracts where there is a written mediation clause agreement in, and a valid mediation clause. The mediation uh, procedure is uh, described in articles five to seven of the new law that I mentioned to you uh, of uh, 2019. Once again, mediation is relied upon a qualified mediator. On her or on him, the institution is dependent. Her and his role, skills, abilities, personality can be the subject of a, a separate study. Uh, and uh, these points are very crucial for the evolution of uh, mediation and the mediation procedures. There is no mediation if there is no mediator, but also there is no successful mediation if there is no capable mediator. Th through uh, her or her skills, mediation techniques on which it is initially trained, but also continuously retrained and re-examined, is called upon to communicate effectively with the parties who have dispute. Mediator does not guide the parties in, in Greece, does not propose solution, at least he and she is not asked for the, from the parties to do so. Uh, he and she listens to the parties and observes them, shows empathy, sympathy, sorry, not empathy, is not, not a good word, helps that, them to realize the real problem, which is often overshadowed by various factors, such as uh, selfishness and others, uh, other issues that are hidden. Mediator helps parties to see real interest and cuts them from the, their positions, as uh, we have heard before from Henry. The key point for a qualified mediator is education and experience, but also concentration, dedication, communication, and neutrality, objectivity, and all these principles that mediate, mediation has. I, I could really speak a lot of uh, mediation, but I don't want to waste time. So if you want me to, <laughs> to stop here, I will because I have many, many things to say, <laughs> many more things to say. Just, just one quick question, if I may. Do, do you think there's, there's a, a different way that the Greeks mediate? As a mediator, I'm not talking about the pa parties. Uh, that is different than the other parts, the countries that you know in Europe? Yes, uh, maybe, um, not, not a difference. Uh, we are not, uh, we're not deciding, we are not proposing. We just facilitate the, the parties to, to find their own solutions and to, uh, to show them what is hidden before uh, besides uh, their, their interest or their needs. I want, uh, I, I, when I take part to a mediation, I barely speak, only ask and hear. And I have, I make big, big uh, pauses that I don't speak, I just uh, keep uh, checking with uh, eye contact and uh, show how they react. It's uh, really uh, very uh, crucial for them to find out their way, but uh, they cannot do that alone because they are uh, uh, coming to uh, they are coming to us or go to courts. They cannot find the solutions alone. So they just need uh, a coaching, but a coaching that uh, don't feel that they are coached. They are they have to feel that they are moving forward themselves. They decide. They choose the the, the right direction for themselves, and when this directions meet to a point, this is the agreement, and then everything will be uh, safe and easy afterwards. And the, the relationships will overcome, uh, will be fixed, and all these things will uh, uh, really um, have a, a reunion and uh, the, the relationship will go on and uh, nothing will stop them afterwards. And if they stop, here we are again to take our parts and our uh, roles. Okay. 
thanks very much, Olga, for, for very your, much. your lecture. And Greece was, uh, some author said that Socrates was the first big negotiator in history. Others also said that Jesus Christ was some kind of a negotiator. So uh, in some way, Greece was the place where, where everything started, at, at least in the, the f philosophical way of thinking. So thanks a lot, Olga, for your lecture. And, and now uh, I have my, my sister from Portugal. Uh, I'm also Portuguese. So Ursula, muito obrigado por estar aqui hoje no, no nosso webinar. I'm going to speak this briefly in Portuguese. <laughs> and the stage is all yours. O palco é todo seu. Fique à vontade. Muito obrigada. Um, thank you for inviting me. This is a great honor. As Daniel said already, I'm uh, originally German, but I live for 30 years in Portugal and I'm doing mediation for 20 years full time between mediation and facilitation of meetings. As you heard in the beginning, I'm doing planning processes also. Uh, I'll try to give you a small insight in the Portuguese um, mediation situation. Um, I hope you can see that all. So um, in Portugal, we have, let me see whether this works. Yeah, we have a, a law which is based on the European regulation. It's from 2013 and it establishes the general principles applica applicable to all mediation in Portugal. So regardless of the entity carrying out the mediation, be it public or private, regardless of the matter in question, this law claims to be valid for all mediations and it uh, establishes the principles like voluntarity, uh, confidentiality, autonomous, uh, autonomy, all these type of things. It regulates specifically the two systems of mediation we have. We have a public system in Portugal, which is uh, tutored by the Ministry of Justice. It's called Shulgado de Paz, like peace court thing. Um, and there are four different types. One is the Shulgaj de Pash, which is first instance um, conflicts until 15,000 euro um, value. We have a public system of family mediation. This is covered here by the Shulgaj de Pash sign. We have a workplace mediation system publicly and a victim offender mediation system. Um, the Shulgaj de Pash works quite well but has a lot of problems because mediation is uh, voluntary obviously and um, somebody brings the process so one part of the conflict brings the process and the other is invite uh, and this part decides whether he opts for mediation or opts against mediation and the other part is invited and if the other part does not come to the date so no mediation happens which leads to the fact that lots of people who bring the process do not opt for mediation because they fear that they lose a day when the other part does not come. So it's complex, um, but anyway, it's there. Um, the mediation, uh, the workplace victim offender mediation does not work so well, not so many cases. The family mediation works quite well. Lots of colleagues are doing family mediation also in the public system. The problem is it's paid by case. So in the Shulgaj de Pash system, you get 110 euros for uh, agreement if you if the parties do an agreement and 90 euros if the parties do not come to an agreement, which is horrible because the, the, the success is not really the agreement, but the talking. In the family mediation, you get 122 euros for the whole case. So if it's like one session or eight sessions, you do not get more. This is a huge conversation, but since 2002, it's like this, and we mediators um, do not have any lobby to change it. That's the public system. Obviously, there is private mediation also. Um, uh, we have an accreditation by the Ministry of Justice. There is a list which is um, tutored by the Ministry of Justice. And if you have the convenient training, uh, sufficient hours, sufficient experience, you can put yourself or you can ask for being put on this uh, list, which is an accreditation list, but it's alphabetical and it doesn't say the field where the mediator intervenes. 
So um, we have something like uh, 500 registered mediators. My name is Ursula Kasa. I'm number 460 something. And it does not say in which uh, fields I intervene. So this list is not really useful. Um, as you see here, mediations take place online and presential. Now with the COVID thing uh, more online, obviously, and the public system, I forgot to say that, um, is opting for online mediations also. I said in the beginning, the mediation law is valid for all mediations in Portugal. It says explicitly like this, but obviously there are fields of mediation where the law is not a Applicable, and that's one of our books that some colleagues, jurists, um, um, which examines the law in the light of the principles for environmental mediation, which is my special uh, field. And we find that confidentiality, voluntarity, autonomous, autonomy, representativity, all these things in a multi partner complex mediation have to be handled differently, like. Uh, family mediation, for example, or personal mediation. So there's a huge um, difference, which is uh, complicated because we, for example, uh, administrative mediators and uh, environmental mediators and all the mediators who work with the representatives are not covered by the law. And um, yeah, we try to solve this, but this is obviously a long way. Next uh, focus would be on training the mediators who are listed in the public systems or the ones who are certified private mediators must be qualified with a course. This was the law was the course must be recognized by the Ministry of Justice until 2013. And since 2013, it's the training entity that is certified um, by the Ministry of Justice, which I feel is a bit complicated because the Ministry of Justice does not look so closely to the content of the mediation training as uh, before, I guess. So there's quite a number of different recognized courses in many fields. We have, for example, insolvency, uh, bankruptcy mediation, um, and uh, family mediation, and penal mediation, and general mediation, and everything. Um, we have many certified training entities with very different scopes. For being an accredited mediator, you have to have 120 hours training, but there are entities who do a 40 hours um, commercial mediation, mediation training like, like CEDAR does in uh, Great Britain, for example. And then you are a, a mediator, not certified by the Ministry of Justice, but so there is a huge variety, let's say. One of the problems I see specifically is that there are very few courses where trainees might fail because all the courses are paid and the entities are not so interested in um, having trainees failing, which is at least, um, I think this is discussable. But there are courses also with um, following the IMI criteria, for example, um, where trainees may fail. And this gives huge discussions all the time and complaints to the Ministry of Justice. So um, another complex um, discussion point. The result is we have very different mediators in Portugal, lots. I think through my trainings for different entities past perhaps, I don't know, 2000 or so, we should have 4,000 around um, trained mediators, but obviously not all of them, or a few, few of them um, really do mediation. So, Actors in the field in Portugal is the Ministry of Justice, as I said already, which um, is the tutor of an entity below, which is called Direção Geral da Política de Justiça, which is a part of the Ministry of Justice, competent for alternative dispute um, resolution. That's for the legal uh, statal part. Then we have a Federação Nacional de Mediação de Conflitos, a federation of mediation associations and enterprises on the one hand and um, personal um, people or personal mediators who can be federated personally. Um, not so many, 70 or 80 personal media, mediators are um, members of the federation, I guess, uh, personally, which is a huge problem because um, there is no lobby for mediation. We have some uh, few, I guess, independent full-time mediators in Portugal. We have some, not so much, 
but in growing, let's say, contracted mediators and enterprises. And we have a huge number of law or psycho or whatever professionals who did a mediation training and who act as part-time mediators who continue to be lawyers and sometimes mediate or continue to be psychologists and sometimes mediate and um, often it's not really separated. So um, for the user, for the citizen who looks for mediation, I think it's a sort of confusing confusing market, which leads me to the market. The market for mediation is difficult as it is probably in all your countries. Mediator is not a protected professional designation in Portugal. Um, uh, mediator is very often understood by real estate mediator because it's the same word, mediador. Um, so you always have to say mediador de conflictus, conflict mediator, and then it uh, needs a huge explanation, explication what this is. We have the mediation paradoxon at work, like probably in your countries also. In Germany, at least, it's the same, which is everybody who, or lots of people who passed through a mediation like it very much and recommend it, but the people who did not pass are very critical. So um, it's not spreading because uh, you only understand what mediation is and the potential when you pass through a mediation. So then there is a lack of information on promotion. Sometimes the Ministry of Justice does some campaigns for the public system, but the, 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 the Federation has not really power because it's so few um, associates, which makes few money, which makes all voluntary work, which makes it difficult. And the mediators are not unified in first protocol. That's the result. And that is very critical because as I said before, there is uh, not much of a lobby, for, neither for mediation, nor for mediators, nor for this intervention. And the lawyers and the bar association are very, very critical and often say, this is a privatization of justice and we do not support it. And so it's complicated. Some quick remarks on culture. The market is difficult not only, but also because of cultural peculiarities. I say that perhaps from a perspective half German, half Portuguese. Um, conflict escalation is already high when people consider external intervention. That's one of the huge problems because when people notice in Portugal, often, I guess it's in Germany, not so different, when people recognize that they cannot solve their conflict on their own, they are already in a so um, escalated situation that they want their right and then they want to go to court and then they want to uh, win. And this is complicated, as we all know, because mediation should start earlier. Communicative cultures like the Portuguese one hesitate to include and open to externals. That's another, let's say, cultural peculiarity, I guess, um, personal and professional um, 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 relationships are very mixed in Portugal um, and it's, 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 it's kept somehow confidential within the families which in the, within the enterprise cultures and so, so to contract somebody external and say, we here have a conflict and we cannot do it on our own. Please offer us an arena for communication is um, complicated. As I said, there is a weak separation between professional and personal relationships, which contributes this. Portugal is a high context culture, which means there is a lot of message in the non-verbal. So this leads to an, a, a specific type of conflict escalation. And again, we end up there where we, where we find ourselves in a situation where conflict escalation is high when people think of um, external resolution. And uh, information is power in at least um, in many um, relationships and enterprises and personal uh, relationships. Talking might be seen as weakness, especially if you are already involved in a conflict. That's why we um, try to convince enterprises, for example, to do a mediation clause in their contracts. So everybody who, uh, who makes a contract, even a civil contract, um, real estate buy or whatever, should have a mediation clause to avoid this, to avoid that people get, because in the beginning when they do the contract, everybody is fine and they will assign everything. 
But when conflict escalates, then it gets very complicated to make people talk because then they think it's seen as weak by the other. So that would be the insight. If you have questions, here I am. Muito obrigado, Ursula. Thanks a lot, Duncan. <laughs> and and Portugal is is really in some some ways really similar to Brazil. Uh, I've been writing about arbitration between Brazil and Portugal, and I recently written a paper on administrate administrative arbitration. And we we have some uh, similarities. Of course, the 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 law tradition uh, in Brazil comes from Portugal. So. Uh, uh, in some ways, you are up in front of us, and for example, we're discussing tax arbitration, and you are, already have tax arbitration there in Portugal. And in mediation, we are, I think, so in the same step. And what I found it interesting that you, you told you, you told the exact number of mediators in Portugal. And if you ask me, and I don't know if Shay, you can answer that, but I have no idea how many mediators we have in Brazil. And of course. Uh, the ones that train for the, the judicial uh, mediation, I think we can get that number in the judiciary, but not uh, the non the non judiciary, the the, the companies are mediation. I, I think I can't. It's hard to to say a num to state a number uh, of mediators in Brazil. Well, uh, I I cannot say an exact number for all the mediators, yeah, but the uh, the ones on the list, yes, because yeah, of course, no, that list. that's in, but but you are a small country, uh, yeah, you have. I think 10 million inhabitants. The population is 10 million. Brazil is 210 million, 220 million. So uh, we have a lot of a lot more inhabitants, and our regions are so much different. And and I say we, we need to discuss to discuss to discuss multicultural uh, mediation, cross cultural mediation. And, and I think in some countries we have to discuss to discuss cross regional uh, mediation because we're so different in, depending on the region. In Italy, for example, the regions are, are completely different like Brazil. The South is completely different from the North and not so much in Portugal, if I'm not mistaken. Don't but, underestimate. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I've been there. I can't, you know, uh, but, but it, it's, it's smaller, but I think Italy, yeah, yeah Italy, uh, it, it's a kind of, and of course the UK, I can even say uh, it's so much different. But thank you, Sola. Of course, we have so many discussions after this one. And, and Giovanni, now uh, Italy, the stage is yours. And I'll share my screen here to, to share the, your PPT. So whenever you're ready. Okay. Many thanks for the invitation. I'm very pleased to be here. Just with so many distinguished uh, fellow colleagues from different countries and from different cultures. As I Jay told at the beginning of this meeting, mediation is simple and complex at the same time. And so it's very, it fits in very different ways in all different situations. Well, mediation in Italy, status and cultural peculiarities in 2021. Second page, please. Civil mediation in Italy can be voluntary, provided by contract, compulsory, and delegated by a judge. The first two are negligible up to now. Since 2010, mediation has been mandatory condition for proceeding in matters that account for about 9% of court civil proceedings, with a first informative meeting where parties can opt out from the mediation proceeding. The parties must be assisted by a lawyer, but too often they are represented by him. So mediation loses much of its effectiveness. Um, mandatory mediation has been strongly opposed by lawyers. It's been considered the child of lesser God by most judges. It's very little known by the public. Nevertheless, According to the European Parliament, Italy uses mediation at rate six times higher than the rest of Europe. Other peculiarities exclusive to Italy, civil mediation statistics related to the whole country, therefore, is possible monitoring of developments. 
studies on predictability of dispute resolution through mediation run by University and Coors of Florence and Barry. Italy has an estimated population of 60 million people. There are 9,400 judges and, 20, and 242,000 lawyers. In the city of Rome, there are as many lawyers as there are in all France. In 2019, there were almost 3 million new proceedings filed in civil courts, 147,000 civil mediation proceedings, and 21,000 mediated settlement agreements. You see, there is a big difference, but we started only 10 years ago. In the 2011-2019 period, there has been a decrease in civil court litigation because of the economic crisis. A strong increase in mediation proceedings and a strong increase in mediation settlement agreements. Nevertheless, there is a wide room for the growth. The Italian state was founded in 1861. In the first civil procedure code, 1865, the heading of the seven introductory articles was conciliation. According to a law issued in the same year, police officers must first of all reconcile conflicts among private citizens. In 1880, the Justice of Peace issued the 70% of all judgments delivered in Italy. According to law number 20, uh, 261 in 1892, the judge, in order to reach a conciliation, could call for the single party in a private hearing. I underline a judge who could make just an antelitum caucus. Before the First World War, the Italian bankruptcy law in 1903 also provided for negotiation agreements on the settlements of the debtor crisis under the control of the judge, who, in small claims, could also act as a mediator. The totalitarian regime carried out during the fascist period, 1922-1943, disliked conflicts and resolutions reached by private citizens. They must be managed by a state body, the judges, through sentences. Since the 30s or last century, in Italy, mediation gradually lost its importance, as it was no longer taught in university for over 70 years. Therefore, mediation was, and still is, part of the Italian legal tradition, but it was forgotten. In 29, there were almost 6 million pending civil litigation cases in the overall judicial system, the highest number ever reached. In 2010, compulsory civil and commercial mediation took off. It came into force in 2011. It was revoked in October 22, 2012, sorry, and reintroduced in September 2013 with some innovations. Among others, compulsory lawyers' assistance to the parties, the first information meeting free of charge and the possibility for the parties to opt out of the proceeding. Nevertheless, there was a furious opposition by lawyers and a benign neglect by judges. In 2010, more than 200,000 disputes were expected to be transferred from courts to mediation, one million in five years. There was a rush to mediation. As a result, in 2012, there were 968 mediation providers, and when no one knows the exact number, maybe approximately 40,000 mediators, mainly lawyers. Most likely, there were more mediators than mediations, and the worst of all, poor training. But little by little, situation is improving. Lawyers and judges began to take an interest in mediation. In 2019, 21,000 mediation agreements were reached, almost the highest number than ever in Italy. 
And if all parties were present in the proceeding and decide to go beyond the first information meeting, the success rate raised to 46%. Is mediation part of the Italian culture? Not yet. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the Italian territory was divided into many states and small political entities for almost 1,500 years. Conflicts and rivalries has been countless. Only 150 years ago, the unitary state was built through words. The social and cultural influence of the Catholic Church has been, as the least, of the utmost importance. But its doctrine is based on forgiveness, not mediation. In Italy, there's been neither the industrial, neither the bourgeois revolution, but only the self-proclaimed fascist revolution, which really was the maintenance of the status quo. Therefore, Italians do like innovations too much. In the Lucchino Visconti 1963 classic movie, The Leopard, there is an enlightening phrase, everything must change so that nothing changes. In the Code of the Italian Life uh, by Giuseppe Prezzolini 1921, it's not absolutely true that in Italy there is no justice it's however true that it's not necessary to ask the judge, but rather the deputy, the minister, the journalist, the flesh and lawyer for justice. The thing can be found, the address is wrong. You know what th thing? In Italy, judicial proceedings last too many years. So in the case of a dispute, many people are aware of a proverb, there is always time to pay and to die. Many thanks for your attention. Thank, thank you very much, Giovanni. You made a, an incredible <coughs> uh, historical background of the Italian mediation. And, mm -hmm. and as you once told me, you have a, an economist background. So uh, mm -hmm. you use the numbers in your favor. And that's how, you know, I think it, it makes a lot of sense to, to think about ADR by the numbers. The numbers uh, actually say how it's being applied by a country. So, so that was a it, very... It, it, it just an help to understand the situation was getting on. Yeah, and how, how do you think uh, nowadays is uh, mediation in Italy? Do you think it's, it's growing up or uh, arbitration is... is bigger than mediation currently or not at no? all not at all um everything is just is based on the judicial judicial system judicial proceedings but because of the pandemia uh because of the new government uh, we are just on the razor edge i think that many th many things can change mm, it may be not very confident, but it may be, uh, because now we are really facing very big problems. And we really need to be courageous and to handle um, our life uh, with our hands. And so things can change. But um, I, I always remember, little by little. And do you think uh, virtual mediation, ODR, uh, increased a lot during the pandemic? Uh, do you think it's a tendency? Uh, ODR was used very, very little before the pandemic. Uh, now uh, it's, uh, it, it improved, it just uh, increased. Uh, we now just accustomed to use ODR. And now we have really to understand how to use it and to be much more accustomed to this new tool. Um, it's not easy because for us Italian, the face-to-face, -face, uh, the meetings uh, to be all together is extremely important also from a social point of view. And just to have all these relations through, uh, through a PC, it's something against our deep culture. Uh, but a new era started. And so now we have to manage with it. Yeah, I think Italians, we're Latins here. 
uh, Giovanni, Brazilians and Italians are so much alike. Uh, and, and uh, the, the, the sunshine is very important because where there is sunshine, you always go uh, uh, walk on the street, meet people and so on. When it's rainy or when it's dark, you don't like to be out of your house, you know. And there's a very important influence. And sometimes uh, the, the principal chat first, negotiate later, for us is more important than the negotiation per se. Uh, you know, you have to meet the person and to chat a little bit about anything for Brazilians, like soccer topics like that, before starting the calcio in Italy, before starting the, the, the negotiation, uh, for example. But th thanks for your lecture, uh, Giovanni. And now... Please, uh, Jair, my good friend, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, I hope that you were listening to me fine. And well, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, 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 very impressed with all uh, the speeches that uh, went on so far. And I've listened to to them with a lot of attention. And I was thinking here all the time because, uh, just let me uh, uh, take hold of the time here in order for me not to go too much beyond schedule. But uh, the thing is that uh, I would allow myself to look at all the speeches at the, I mean, possible measure from above because all of you had uh, somehow traced uh, uh, the specificities of your systems, mediation systems and so on, from a, from a, a very uh, uh, precise and accurate perspective. Talking about the, the, the daily problems, the, the immediate concerns that really occupy a, a, a mediator and someone that looks at, uh, at, the, at a certain system. And uh, I was really impressed with the way uh, in which you touched certain aspects, paradoxical aspects, without revealing them completely. Uh, I, I will try to be more specific here. Um, there are two paradoxes in what you said so far, all of you. First, a certain uh, uh, contradiction between the universal and the specific, the particular and the general, the broad and the narrow, right? So Henry told us that he would love to talk about the universal aspects of mediation, right? And uh, this brought to my mind something that uh, Michel de Montaigne which was a thinker, a French thinker, of course, said once, which is that the most universal quality is diversity. The Italian mother, my dear friend Giovanni, says to his son, uh, if you don't do what I want, I kill you. And the Jewish mother, as I can recall very well, says to his son, if you don't do what I want you to do, I'll kill myself. So they are, they are very universal in their motherhood, but they are very different in the way that they uh, uh, put in practice the methods of motherhooding, if you allow me the verbalization of the noun. Okay, so what I'm trying to say here is that, yes, being universal, uh, Tolstoy, Leo, Leo Tolstoy, or Lev Tolstoy, he was Jewish, uh, said once, if you want to be universal, you first begin by picturing your own village, your little hamlet, your little neighborhood. Why? Because as we know by listening and, and reading Shakespeare, all the human tragedies are there in his work, even though he was talking about small hamlets in somewhere in the United Kingdom geographic area, right? Okay, so this is the first paradox, which in my opinion is a false. It's not a paradox at all. It can be reconciled depending on the way you look at it, right? If you look at it very close, 
you will not be able to even uh, understand what you're seeing. But if you take some perspective, some distance out of the thing, then you, you will maybe recognize some features that are paradoxically universal and particular at the same time. Right? And second, if I was listening only, if, if, if I was to listen only to Henry, he would say, well, you know what? Mediation is doing good in, in, in England, right? So everything is going fine. Every day I do have my cases and it is about asking the right questions and everything. And so if I listen to Olga, I said, well, my God, okay, we need to do something about Greece because mediation is going very bad there. And it's a dire situation. Uh, if I listen to, okay, uh, Daniel asked Giovanni, uh, listen, Giovanni, is mediation part of Italian culture now? And he says, Oh, by all means, not yet, right? Okay, so uh, what we are talking here? So uh, are we all crazy? You, Ursula told us a lot about uh, uh, how mediation is going in Portugal and everything, and everything seems to go well and so on and so forth, but just the same, we do have some limits and, and so on. So what's going on here? And, and I think that uh, nobody's crazy. We're talking about the same thing, but we're talking about a different perspective. I think that we can reconcile. We can somehow put together both things, some apparently contradictory things, by applying a method, Olga, that your fellow citizen, Aristotle, uh, after having written, uh, having written uh, the 13 volumes of his vast work, he wrote the last one that he called metaphysics, right? Meta meaning what comes after the physics, which is something else. It is not about the scientific method. It is not about experimentation. It is not, not about an empirical thinking. It is about using the Lesbos Misura, the homo misura, if you prefer, Giovanni, in, in Latin, by which the rule to measure the contours of things, it is not like this, but it is like a string, a wire that adapts to the, the features of a specific object. So what I'm trying to say here is that if we use, and this is the most important thing in my opinion, if, uh, that, that we can say about mediation here, regardless, nonetheless, the many specificities or universalities or whatever you, you, you want to mention, it is that if you use, if you look at mediation from an, a, a, an either or point of view, from the a scientific approach, if you measure the success or the presence or the importance or the relevance of mediation by analyzing how many cases are settled by mediation, we would be lost. Because, you know, it's like uh, uh, saying that ethics doesn't exist, do not exist because ethical principles are not uh, 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 majorly applied in Brazil today, if you look at politics, or in Italy, or uh, uh, you, you, we will say that health doesn't exist because most of the world is soaked into a global health crisis and a lot of people is dying. No, my friend, even if you're dying at this right moment, life is still posing inside of you. It is the eternal conflict between eros, and again, this is, uh, if I'm not wrong, it's Greek, and thanatos, or thanatos, right, which is death. And, and this is typical of living organisms, a certain uh, way of approaching societal problems. You look at the society as if it were a living organism, right? Exactly as we do with environmental law. So if we 
if we say that because the Amazon forest is being devastated in, uh, I mean, alarming propor propor proportions, environment, does, environment doesn't, does not exist anymore, we would be wrong. So what I'm trying to say here is that if we detach from the concrete result of mediation, the efficiency of this dispute resolution method, and if we focus on its ability of changing paradigms, of changing uh, minds, you will see that uh, mediation is more than a dispute resolution method. It's a process of thinking, of considering, of assessing, of understanding conflict. We are shifting in the last 20, 25, and, and listen, the thing that I'm a big fan of mediation in all kinds of settings and, and contexts. No, sometimes you, you need to use some adversarial methods, like litigation, why not, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you like mediation or not, you need to concede to the fact that it came to stay and that it slipped into the legal system by the cracks of this legal system itself. And it came to stay and it's changing the mind of many different, of, of, of all the dispute resolution uh, uh, practitioners it doesn't matter, regardless if they are litigators or, or, or this or, or that. So uh, what I'm trying to say here is, is that mediation, this debate uh, about mediation, is putting in the agenda a very human uncertainty that beforehand was totally out of the legal concept, of the legal setting of the legal continent. So yes, Henry, the questions are, but, and you've been studying uh, linguistics, right? And you know how uncertain a single word like yes or no might be. I like very much to use a neo word, a neologism that I created, which is yesn't. Because sometimes, my friend, a single yes, it, it, it's made of many previous no's. Think about marriage, for instance. Right? How many no's you say before finally engaging to this uh, 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 union with your partner or, or whatever, right? So what I'm trying to say is that uh, mediation brought to the daily agenda what the the okay yes what are your concerns and 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 Olga what I would say is the following uh, Henry told us Henry taught us that uh, it is not about money okay but it might be about maintaining a certain political and ideological position that doesn't favor mediation in Brazil, for instance. Why? Because justice has, uh, I mean, largely not working here for just 500 years, right? A, a regular case in Brazil takes 20, 25, if so, to be solved. And in, in Italy, it's more or less the same. I've been living in Italy for four years in Rome and after near Luca and Viterbo and, and some other places and so on and so forth. And I've seen, uh, try to put an Italian in line or online on a queue, right? Waiting for the, the bread at the bakery store, for instance. You will not get there because these guys, they just don't, <laughs> they, uh, they don't adapt to to cues or to lines, but they know exactly what are their order in the in the in, in the servicing of that specific commodity that they are going uh, after. Right. So what I'm trying to say here is that mediation it's important by its sole existence as an alternative. It adds to the system 
a big interrogation mark as to the possible outcomes of a conflict. Because uh, you know as well as I do that uh, having a final award or having a final agreement doesn't mean that the thing has stopped, has finished, has been closed. The thing will continue so because you need compliance when, when it comes to that specific thing. So conflict solving is a process, maybe a never ending process. And mediation is all about that, okay? So it, it, it's like ethical principles that you don't need to apply to have them ruling over yourself. Sometimes you just apply uh, them by contrast, but not complying. Now, it's a, sometimes it's a way of, of resisting for being ethical. So uh, also, uh, let me just see my time here. I just have one minute. Um, so mediation, and again, mediation is not a pure thing. You have art meet, you have meet art meet, you have nego mediation, you have mid arbitration, you have whatever. And there, are, there are many possibilities to use what the method. It's a box. It's a toolbox, it's a toolkit, it's a skill set from where you can take off a lot of different techniques that will help you navigate some, I mean, to, to walk over thin eyes. So it's a perspective, mediation, it's a process. It's a way of thinking and referring to, com to conflict. It, its influence uh, and importance cannot be measured by the number of cases settled in a certain year, in a certain place. It works within the core of the system silently and sometimes unnoticingly. It's like culture. My dear friend Henry, uh, Hong Kong came came back to the British control in 1997. And it, and it was taken in conditions that you've probably uh, heard of in 1842 after a criminal war that was called the Opium War from the Chinese, right? Yes, okay. So how many people, when we talk about Hong Kong, remember that this whole history had gone, I mean, behind the scenes? Nobody, why? Because culture, our most important convic convictions are, uh, we are not aware of them, are unconscious, right? Co uh, you know, uh, culture is something that comes to your mind when you forgot everything else. It just comes natural. You know, and, and so what I would like to say is that uh, mediation is a cultural phenomenon that is changing the way we treat and resolve conflict and probably for good. We're going, it's like the jury in the common law system. It's disappearing. It will disappear. It's not possible in the United States, for instance, for you to put up juries for every single civil or, uh, case because, you know, it's, it's especially during a pandemic. So what I'm trying to say here is that well, I'm, I'm, I'm truly happy for, uh, for uh, witnessing the, the quality of this debate, right? Why? Because mediation is one of these uh, uh, subjects by, uh, in which, by being simple, you are being very complex. It's like, uh, it's like Da Vinci said that simplicity is the utmost expression of perfection. Of, of complexity, right? That's exactly what happens with mediation. In Portugal, at the Juizados de Paz or whatever, when they are settling that simple case that will uh, allow that person to move on, uh, we are doing all these things. And when it comes to a complex art myth thing, we are applying, and we, when we are thinking the ways of restorative justice, for instance, we are threading the pathway of mediation. So mediation, uh, it, it's, it's larger than, well, it's a larger than life concept, right? And, and that's why I'm so happy for, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, witnessing this, this debate. So just some uh, ideas, very loose ideas, some maybe probably crazy, you know, but the medicine that I took this morning uh, is already, uh, I mean, uh, bringing some effect, not totally, but uh, blame it on the lab, right? You know, this big pharma thing. They make, you know, 
You just get addicted to this medicine and when you don't take them, you end up saying things like I'm doing right now. Okay, so again, bring Pfizer, bring, uh, I mean, Moderna, bring this labs for all the craziness, crazy things that I've been saying <laughs> here now. So thank you for being so patient as to listen to me and let's go on with the debate. Daniel. Jair, thanks a lot for enlightening us. You, you went really deep in the discussion and uh, of course, you started talking about Aristotle, which is my favorite author. And, and I, I re, it remind, reminded me that Aristotle said back then that it was possible to make an universal constitution and based on the natural law. And he said the fire that burns here burns elsewhere the same way, for example. And, and I was thinking about this in the mediation per perspective, as Henry told us a little bit about the universals. And of course, everything ends in the conflict, starts and ends in the conflict. And conflicts are the same everywhere. It's about different positions. And, and that's the, the mediator's role everywhere. And just so, but thanks a lot, you know, I was learning here with you, Jair, and of course, of all of you, the, the debate was really rich. And I have one question here in the YouTube channel, if I may read it to you. It's from uh, Ronald Adoma Adomatis. I don't know if he's Greek yeah, or did this, his last name looks like a Greek name, but maybe he's Brazilian, I don't know. And, and he's, he asks, I would like to know if methods such as family constellation and reflective transpo transformative mediation apply and to speak a little about the results of these methods in European culture. So would any of you would like to address this question? Yeah, I, I'd like to say something about that. Um... A reflective transformative mediation, I, I think, is unbelievably powerful way of resolving a dispute. I mean, when I did my training as a mediator, I, I, am, a, I am a lawyer, but actually I've almost lost my whole lawyer mindset, having becoming a full-time mediator for the last 10 years. And um, my approach to mediation is absolutely pure facilitative. I actually don't believe in medarb, I don't believe in any of the, the hyphenated words that Jaya used in terms of um, conflict resolution. I think that um, facilitative mediation is actually the purest form. And if there's anything more pure, I would describe it as transformative. Um, and reflective transformative mediation is, um, is certainly something that I have actually used, uh, particularly when you have uh, relationships in a professional environment or even in a family environment, where it is absolutely crucial for the greater good or for, uh, in order to preserve relationships with other third parties, um, to use that form of approach as opposed to anything that is, um, any decision that is actually uh, imposed on the parties. And um, I've got a recent case where two members of a very, um, very high profile board in the UK were clearly in dispute um, between themselves. And I was appointed as a mediator and I've been involved in this particular issue for over nine months on a rolling basis, and it's still continuing. And so the, the trick is to coach the parties to try and change their mindset effectively. Um, I mean, it doesn't always happen in, you know, litigation-based mediation, but, and, and I think this is one thing that I would, I would actually challenge, is that, that mediation actually applying to litigation is about 0.1% of the possible um, disputes going on in the world that don't have any litigation 
at all, and there might not even be lawyers involved at all. I mean, de by definition, people, you know, are in conflict on a second by second basis. And if you multiply that, I mean, I'm not a statistical person at all. Um, you know, there are disputes going on all the time. There are tensions or this, they can end up in court. But I think the trick actually is to get to the issue as soon as possible, get the, the lawyers out of it completely and bring in skilled mediators who have the ability to change lives. That's really what it's about. And um, my, my vision is that, you know, a mediate, um, mediators, there should be millions and millions and millions of them across the world. There probably are actually anyway, it's just they're not called that. Um, and I think that, yeah, reflective transformational mediation is, is, a, is a great way of describing what needs to happen when people are actually in conflict. Because also it's the parties who need to be empowered to actually make their own decisions and to change their own lives. And that's why litigation is fatal um, and actually going to court is fatal because it's the judges who retain the power, not the parties. Thank you very much. Henry, Ursula, you raise your hand, please. Just, just a quick um, note uh, also, because this is an intercultural thing, I guess, because I'm uh, in different... Uh, situations in Germany, um, evaluating master thesis, for example, and in Portugal. And what I feel is there's a huge gap between uh, German, Russian, Ukrainian, uh, Great Britain and so, and the Roman or Southern, I don't know exactly how it's in Greece, but in, I know from Spanish and Portuguese colleagues, the, the success is the dialogue and it comes from the transformative uh, philosophy, let's say. And in Germany and uh, Great Britain, and uh, I have lots of colleagues in uh, Russia also, the success is the agreement. So it's much more facilitative and comes from Harvard. And the funny thing is, at least for me, the funny thing is I live in Portugal and I go to Portuguese, Spanish and so congresses and I'm German and I go sometimes to German, Austrian and so on congresses and the colleagues do not mix because you either read English or you read Spanish and French or so and if the in the in the um, German and uh, Austrian and so conferences there's perhaps the keynote translated but the rest is in English and in the Portuguese Spanish perhaps the keynote is translated and the rest is in Spanish and so oh, there's a huge gap which is not even felt somehow between the facilitative focus, let's say, and the transformative focus. Ursula, it's funny because here in Brazil, we read a lot of German authors in the law field, in philosophy and everything. And when a new book comes out, for example, I, I unfortunately I don't speak German, and but we get the Spanish translation. The first translation is in Spanish, from Spain, actually. And, and that helps us a lot because we, we usually can read in Spanish real, real easily. And any, Olga, any remarks? Jair, please, the stage is yours. Olga? Yeah, I think Jair is uh, raising his hand, I think. No, you're, you're first. Jair will wait, of course. Of course. In Greece, we have facilitative uh, mediation. We cannot uh, have anything else because uh, we, we really uh, don't want to be uh, to, to, to have this sense that we, we are, uh, are using all these uh, jazzes uh, methods and skills. We, we are really um, very criticized by the judge and the, the other lawyers and uh, which are uh, in fact uh, the enemies of uh, mediation here in Greece. So we, we really don't want to interfere with other uh, methods and other uh, um, styles. So I think that we, we don't use anything but facilitative uh, mediation. 
So I don't have to say more about all these uh, other styles that, uh, of course, Henry and uh, Ursula is uh, very familiar of. Thank you, Olga. Jai, any remarks, Giovanni? I know that uh, Giovanni, since he's Italian, he's, he's crazy to talk. So I'll try to be very brief, my friend, in order to give you the opportunity of saying something. Uh, this is a problem. We are, I mean, too talkative, either Brazilians or you know, Italians and so on. But what I'm trying to say is that this question that raised the discussion reminds me of a joke, uh, and I'm sorry, it might be a little bit uh, 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 incorrect, Politically, but uh, there's this uh, uh, this joke about this this man. He was actually an old man that he lived in Nagasaki, and uh, at, at that morning, tragical morning, when the the bomb was dropped, criminal bomb was dropped uh, over the city, he woke up and went out of bed, and at a certain point, he flushed the toilet, and then the bombs exploded. And he said, wow, what I'm trying to say here is the following. I don't know if you're familiar with a constellation, right? It, it, it's more than a facilitative mediation. It's much more. It works with some unsuspected and not clearly explained in terms of hard science uh, uh, methods, right? What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't matter, Giovanni. I used to say that mediation, successful mediation in court, in court or out of court, it's like a pre-baked lasagna, right? You buy it at the supermarket, you put it for seven minutes into the microwaves, and then it gets ready. Of course, that this is a scene. This is, I mean, unacceptable in Italy. Lasagna has to be made by our mamas, right? But anyways, uh, the drivers, the, the 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 little thing or the huge thing that that triggers the yes or the yesn't is not that important, in my opinion. Why? Because empowering the parties, Henry, is not anymore into the powers of the state. To uh, the judicial branch is not the only one authorized by the modern theory of state as the one instance that will deliver you, that will serve you with justice. Justice is not anymore something that the state dispenses to you. It's something that I take hold of through not war or violent methods, but through negotiating with the other party. That's the thing. So as the uh, uh, atomic bomb had destroyed completely uh, what was under it, uh, mediation and this new methods came to destroy, to erode, to deconstruct the very pillars of our modern state and putting justice back in the hands of the society. What we will do with that, I, I'm not really sure about, but you see that the big EB, Gordelicious Gesetzbuch from Germany was the model of the civil code and the civil law, the Roman Germanic, system uh, back in at the end of the 19th century. And now we have in Brazil, for instance, courts in which sections, sections of constellation are put up in order to find out what will be the result of a dispute resolution method. So this is unthinkable. We are talking about the Roman, but let's not forget, Giovanni, that in Rome itself, we did have two different systems. The civili, which was for the elite, that in Brazil goes well, thank you very much. And the uh, gentium that applies to the foreigners and the, I mean, the remainder, not to say the rest of the people. So what I'm trying to say here in this four minutes is that uh, that's it, Ursula. What will we do with the libraries of civil procedure that have been written by the many luminars and uh, stellar thinkers, German guys and uh, von Yering and so on and so forth, 
since you have constellation, maybe we have a fortune teller, maybe you have, you know, the butcher uh, around the corner, which is uh, the person that you uh, rely upon, and he will say, well, listen, I think that you should do that. This is the trigger. That's what justice might be. So this is unprecedented. This is new, right? So we have to, uh, I mean, take off our ties and our certificates and diplomas and degrees and everything, and maybe begin a study in the constellation. Why not? There are some crash courses, five days, uh, one day intensive and everything. But I'm joking, of course, but what I'm trying to say is that when you see how deep mediation has stuck, I mean, has penetrated into the core of the system, Okay, let's have this uh, 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 psychic session and ask von Yering what he thinks about constellation. And he will say, uh, sorry, uh, in his German accent, what? Constellation? But what does it mean? Okay, so that's what I'm trying to get. And I'm not against constellation. I'm just trying to put here a parallel. That's it, my friend. Go on. Yeah, here. You, you like an actor who will be very successful, indeed. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about changing profession because law is not doing but very well. Doing he, well. he is a, <laughs> a, a guitar player. He's a jazz. He plays jazz. So it's kind of an act, acting. I, I have just understood why Daniel said that he was his mentor. You are a magician, not a mentor. <laughs> That's great. Jair Copperfield. I'm taking my meds. But, but Giovanni, I don't know if you want to say something. Please, Giovanni. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, after listening here, I just, I just try to, <laughs> to be silent. Um, which kind of mediation here in Italy? We started with the facilities of the mediation, but uh, as far as I involved, I use the kind of mediation that I need according to the different situations. Because sometimes, I prefer the facilitative, but sometimes, mainly if I know very well the matter and I uh, am able to understand which would be the best solution for both, I started to be uh, valutative. But I really don't, I just have one rule. At the beginning of the mediation, I say these words. There are only three words to follow. Two rules, respect other people, listen to other people, and do not offend in them. Therefore, they speak but quietly and just trying to understand. No time limits. Sometimes the situation, the solution is found in 15, 20, 30 minutes, 10 times in two, three days. Um, Jay told that um, mediation is a very powerful tool. I totally uh, agree with him. The problem is a human being that <laughs> too many times don't understand how successful and how better would be just to mediate and to find a common solution. Um, I told at the beginning, we just started 10 years ago, it will take time because you must understand and you must learn. And uh, if you think that we have a beginning, uh, as in, in a lot of other countries, we have just a beginning training lectures of only 50 hours, it's too little and it's much more time and in this practice. Now the problem we have is the lawyerization of mediation. Because there is the compulsory presence, the compulsory assistance of lawyers in mediation, too many times they not only assist, but they represent the parties. And at that time, too many times, the question is on civil, procedural code and not on mediation. Powerful, powerful, helpful, very helpful, but it will must understood, it must learned. And I always stress 
training is absolutely necessary. Thanks very much. Thank you, Giovanni. So we, we, we arrived at the, at the time that it's the final remark uh, at time. So please, uh, let's start with the ladies. Uh, Ursula, por favor, qualquer uh, final, qualquer afirmação final, esse é o momento. Olga, uh, please, uh, Giovanni and Henry afterwards, and Jair, of course, uh, any final remarks? Thanks a lot again for your presence. I, I really learned a lot today. I'm sure everyone that's watching also did. I had some comments here in the YouTube channel, uh, like genius webinar, some things, uh, some compliments like that. So thanks a lot. I think this is the first one of many to come. CBMA has its doors open for all you guys, for all the MGG members. And of course, every, every profession, ADR professional. I think our role here is to spread the ADR culture. And as my friend Jair says, uh, of course, we have some ADR ecosystems, some difference in our ADR ecosystems, but we all, we all have the same goal, which is uh, to spread mediation and, and to, 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 to be peacemakers and community organizers, not just lawyers. And thanks a lot for being here today. And please, uh, ladies, final remarks, I, I just start. Thank you very much. Super interesting. Obviously, all these insights. Um, it's always good to have a local to tell about the things. I hope really we will keep in touch and in discussion. Right. Very, very um, interesting. Thanks a lot. Muito obrigado. Olga, please. Thank you. Thank, thank you very, very much uh, for this uh, opportunity to be here with you and learn a lot. Uh, I also learned, have learned a lot. Uh, I will stick to what Zahir said uh, about uh, uh, all this uh, uh, controversial uh, among uh, countries. Uh, and this, uh, I think that uh, he's right. In Greece, at least in Greece, uh, mediation is really in experimental uh, st st stadium. Uh, although we have, uh, as I said, uh, uh, over 10 years uh, mediation law. Over we have over 2,000 mediators, accredited mediators. So my um, my wish is uh, that uh, uh, citizens uh, of Greece uh, learn a, a lot of uh, about mediation and uh, appreciate all these uh, things that uh, might have. Uh, uh, learned from that institution because it's not only dispute re resolution, it's the way of thinking, the way of living, and way, the way of feeling. And we have, it's the high time now that we are uh, social distancing uh, among each other uh, to feel each other and uh, uh, think uh, more and listen more to each other. Thank you very much. It was a really great chance. To be here. Giovanni? Uh, I was thinking we should be in the consequences of the pandemic on our social life uh, and how mediation can help in managing these problems. Um, we read that, that our own countries in, all the, in different ways have the same situation the same social economic behaviors. What can we do as mediators in just facing these problems? I'm sorry, but I really don't have a question, an answer. We can work as much as we can, but uh, I think that there will be a very long way to go in front of us. Thank you, Giovanni. Grazie tanto. Harry, Prego, please. grazie a te. <laughs> well, I know Jay is going to follow me, so maybe he's got an answer to the pandemic. Um, the, the, the only comment I would make about the pandemic is that I think it's um, actually brought local communities closer together with the possibility of then rebuilding into international. Um, and I think my own personal experience is that I've got to know people locally much more than I ever used to. Um, if you live in central London and I live in the 
in Hampstead, which is only actually, so it only takes 45 minutes to walk, but I've never walked to central London in my whole life. Whereas this year I'm beginning to walk there. Um, and I'm, but I'm now having meetings, you know, in, in local communities. And I think that's quite a good thing because you're building up, you know, a local structure that then can re, potentially re-expand globally, whilst at the same time being able to keep in touch on these amazing Zoom platforms, etc. So there are, there are some positives. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for, um, you know, listening to, to what we've, we've had to say. I'm absolutely humbled, and I, I'm allowed to say this, I'm humbled that, you, that English has been the, the universal language of this particular meeting, as it is in many, many cases. Um, I, I'm just, I really am truly amazed how, how well people who are not brought up with English in their mother tongue are able to express themselves. I think it's, it's, just, it's just incredible. I, I am a linguist myself, but I would never, ever try to mediate in any language other than my own language. Um, so, so that's that. Um, I'm just going to make a passing comment that we, in, in our little island on the north of Europe, were very fortunate in some ways that Napoleon never came and invaded us. We were very actually fortunate that, the, that Rome came because that created an amazing system but um i think napoleon can can um can be blamed in some ways for the you know the codification of the legal system across a large number of parts of europe which actually make life a lot more difficult we have a, a very more we have a much more fluid legal system based on precedent um, as opposed to statute and that can i actually think that assists us in being able to move into a mediated environment more easily. And I think that's, that, that's it really. The more mediations, the better. Um, you know, I'm averaging between one and three a week at the moment um, and have been since the, the March lockdown last year. My God, it's March very shortly. We've been, here, been doing this for a year. Um, and whilst face-to-face -face is, of course, the best, Zoom isn't a bad second. Thank you very much indeed to all of you. Thanks, Henry. Uh, of course, English was the, the language that all of us speak. I, I actually tried Greek, but we only spoke ancient Greek. And I, I think that was going to be a little bit difficult, you know, for, for all of us. We're little, our, our, our modern Greek is rusty. It's a little bit rusty. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. you that the next session will be in ancient Greek. I, I think you promised that. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe in the next life, Olga. Sorry about that. You know, of course, I'm willing to learn Greek, but I think not in this life. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thanks, Henry, for all your remarks and everyone. Another, once again, a great honor to have you here. It was a, an outstanding and amazing debate. And there's one more comment here. Uh, you were magnificent. So that's a good, uh, a good thing to say. Thank you, everyone. Jair, please wrap it up. Who I am, my friend. I'll try to just say something, uh, some things that uh, haven't been said yet. But first, uh, Daniel, only a person with your uh, spirit and personality and character will be able to put together such a diverse and, and interesting group of people here. This is, uh, I've been through many uh, webinars, uh, either at CDMA and other venues and everything, but uh, this, uh, the power of putting good people, uh, good faith of people together and good professionals, competent, thinkers and practitioners together. Uh, this, this has a, a power that might really uh, uh, operate miracles, I think, right? So thank you. Thank you, uh, Henry. Uh, you're very straightforward, very uh, precise, very concise, as most of your fellow citizens. Uh, you don't speak, you don't waste words, right? And this is a very good quality that, I mean, we, we Latin, guys, we don't have this. We like to, you know, we, we have them in great stock, right? So we need to spend it a lot. 
uh, but but uh, uh, it, it was great. You gave us a very precise account of how mediation is going, how your practice is is uh, being performed in, in your country and so on. Your experience is priceless, is very valuable to us. Uh, it was great also the meticulous and, and very uh, uh, competent way in which Ursula, Giovanni, and Olga, not exactly in this order, brought to us a, a, a quite a, a broad and comprehensive account of how mediation is uh, uh, doing in your countries. Right? Uh, it's very valuable because uh, behind every sentence of, uh, of what you said and, 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 and conveyed to us, uh, um, there, there is a lot of effort. There are many years of practice. There, there is a whole lot of thinking. So it, 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 it seems, you know, it's like Picasso said, you know, he could paint a, a, a masterpiece in, in 10 seconds, but it took him his whole life to get there. So uh, I would like to uh, uh, um, uh, acknowledge this and uh, express my deepest respect, Giovanni, Ursula, Olga, and to your experience. Uh, every single word that is said here uh, is, is, is a silver line with your experience and with, with it, it brings and expresses uh, a whole life dedicated to the cause of justice and, and uh, uh, peace. Uh, you are peace painters, right? So what I would like to say about the pandemic is the following. Henry, try that 45 minutes walk to, to, the, to the London uh, uh, down, long, downtown area. It might change your life. That's 45 minutes, which is the pandemic compared to your lifespan. Uh, well, look, there's nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> but the compare, I mean, out of London at the moment. <laughs> okay, fine. So let's wait for the for spring, right? But but do it, right? This forty-five minutes looking at different uh, because that's what the pandemic is all about. With all due respect to the to the tragic to the heavy toll that the pandemic is costing the world in terms of human lives, which is regrettable, which is unfortunate, which is, you know, uh, we, can, we will never recover from that, people that are disappearing on the plane. But it is giving to us at the same time uh, uh, an opportunity to look at things from a different perspective. Yeah. And, and the sole fact Henry, that so many people, so some, someone could say from a very practical point of view that, you know what, uh, how many people will die? 1%, 2%, let's say 5% of the world population. You know, why would we care about that? Uh, and the fact that the whole world is taking care, we are taking care of each other. Everyone at his or her own pace, but we are trying to protect each other. And this is this is also unprecedented in, the, in human history. So, um, Jay, Giovanni, sorry, Jay, do you think that we learned um, the lessons so that just after this pandemic will be better? We'll try to better understand other people and to try to understand all the situations. I have no doubt about it. The, the sole fact of you, the four of you, the five of you being here without charging a single penny for your time bringing up your ideas, giving for free your life experience means that we can be very, we can have faith in, in, in humankind, in mankind, right? Oh, humankind is, is better, but uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm no doubt, I have no doubt about it. You know, uh, uh, I think that it's been worthwhile. Uh, we will get, we will go through this. This will also pass, right? We are very, very, uh, I mean, wary and, and uh, shepherd and battered because of the situation and everything. But the thing is, we never trade a good question. You said that you don't know the answer. You know all the answers. You know all, Giovanni, all the important answers. You, don't, you cannot answer what has no answer so far, right? So we never trade a good question for an answer. Why? Because it closes the doors. A, a, an answer somehow pacifies, uh, closes the door. And, and, and this pandemic must 
stay and remain for a while as an open door for us to, to see where we are heading, right? And, and, and that's uh, uh, probably uh, all about what I would, would say. The, the only reason why we, we are understanding each other, Henry, is because we are culturally fluent. Our lives cultural, culturally fluent. We are fluent in cultures. We are fluent in human values. We are fluent in humanity. We are fluent in dignity. And, and this is more important than any language. We need to talk peace. We need to talk uh, 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 comprehension. We need, we need to talk uh, 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 conflict solving. And that's why we are understanding each other. It goes beyond, you've been studying linguistics and you know that probably 30% of what we understand from the discourse comes from the words. We, we do have, I mean, body language as Giovanni is very fluent in body language too, as precedents are, and, and so on and so forth. But, but uh, we have this ability of understanding things that are not said. Uh, the, the, the healing meanings, the, the implied meanings, the, 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 even though we are online, Giovanni, I, I, can, I can see pretty well your eyes and I can recognize in you the very human expressions that I experiment as a human being. So that's our best qualities. And, and, and that's why I'm happy, you know, because I feel like I fulfilled Henry my duty as a human being, as a, uh, a person concerned with conflict solving and everything, by being with you, we need to do more of these things. And thanks, Daniel, for granting us with this opportunity. This is priceless, my friend. This is what life is, uh, is for. This is what is worth about living, you know? How much we could have made of our two hours mediating, $1,000, $2,000, 2,000 euros, okay. I would pay 10 times this much just for being with you again. Of course, that I'm using here a certain uh, uh, linguistic license, right? Uh, as a good lawyer, I will put a, a waiver on that. I will put a waiver. But, but I mean, even if I had to pay, and if I had 10,000 euros, I would put it on the table just to have the opportunity of being with you again. So, Daniel, please put us together again. <laughs> I, I, thanks, Jay, Take for your, care, your, my for your kind care, words. I, I, I need to thank here uh, MGG and Giovanni Olga. I first met MGG, the Mediators Global Group. Uh, through them, they kindly invited me. So, and this actually this event this webinar started there and if it wasn't for giovanni for olga uh, i wouldn't we wouldn't be here together today and we have 40 members are we for we have 40 members there giovanni or so and and we'll have more with other members of course and cbma has his doors its doors open for all of you thanks a lot for your time for your lunch time it's a precious moment and if you ever need us in Brazil, now you have a, a port here, a dock here in Brazil. Just, just name it, just say it, and we are here for you. After the pandemia. Perfect. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. Th thanks, everyone. So we are reaching here two hours. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day, a lovely lunch, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah.